Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where I rarely talk about books apparently. Um, it has been a few weeks since my last video. Today we are going to be doing my June wrap up. I will be adding on my July TBR onto the end of this video as well. For those of you who haven't caught my last few videos, I have recently had a newborn son, so it does mean that my reading time has been rather limited. All of the books I have read this month have been on audio because when would I ever sit down to actually read a book and do something for myself? No. Audio is the way to go while I am driving. That is where the vast majority of my reading time has come. But let's jump into the seven books that I did read this month. The first book that I completed this month was the third book in a trilogy. This is The Greenbone Saga and this was Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. Now, for those of you who don't know, The Greenbone Saga is an urban fantasy series is a trilogy in which we are following the no peak clan so this is a very modern setting it's almost real world technology set in a fictional secondary universe um, and we are following uh, Hilo and Lan and Shay and Andon so these are all characters or part of the no peak clan in this world um, the clans of Kacon are able to use jade, this green stone substance, um, to enhance their abilities and essentially get magic. So the No Peak Clan is one of the two largest clans in KCON and controls the jade industry, as well as protecting many of the different businesses and establishments in KCON. The clans are the most powerful organizations, much more powerful than the government in some ways. So for me, the first book, Jade City, was a bit hit or miss. It started a little bit slow, it improved as it went. Jade War, as many of you will know, was an incredible sequel in my opinion. I think it stepped up the series massively and I think Jade Legacy continued at that high level. It continued to progress and it continued to evolve our characters. We got to understand them more, know them more. I really enjoyed the new characters that were brought in, how some characters were um, grown and evolved and I think Fonda Lee did that incredibly, incredibly well here in book three. I gave this a solid, solid four and a half stars. I think it was a very satisfying um, and complete end to a trilogy. This trilogy probably isn't going to be one of my favourite trilogies of all time. It's not going to go on my top ten series list, I don't think. But I do think it is incredibly good. If you're looking for more urban fantasy, if you're looking for Asian-inspired, East Asian-inspired fantasy, if you are looking for a godfather but with fantasy elements, I would highly, highly recommend this. I think that Fonda Lee has done a very good job bringing the series into land, and I'm very excited to see what else Fonda Lee writes because I think they, she has real, real potential as an author in the fantasy genre, and I will be definitely looking forward to her future releases. Next up is a book two in a series, and this is Red Seas Under Red Skies by Scott Lynch, the second book in the Gentleman Bastard sequence. I really enjoyed this book. I read Lies of Loch Lamora last month, I have read Red Seas of the Red Skies this month, and for me it is much the same. It is a continuation in true fashion. I really love the slightly different setting, I love the way that we are getting these characters growing and evolving, and I'm loving the way that Locke and Jean's relationship grows and changes and is established, and I think that is awesome. If you've never read The Gentleman Bastards, I'm sure that one thing you have heard about it is that there is this brilliant friendship. Um, and I think that is something that we see wonderfully in book one and it is involved and grows beautifully in book two. Um, the Gentleman Bastards is a funny, relatively light-hearted, although definitely still epic fantasy series in which we are following um, Locke Lamora um, and his crew. And essentially what they are doing is they are running cons. They're running the long game on different people and it becomes a very complex um, scam essentially that is being ran by Locke and his crew. I really like how we start in this series and I love, love, love the way it involves in this book. The plot can feel a bit meandering in this book. Sort of halfway through we just sort of take a, a right turn and just disappear and do something else really seemingly random. But I loved it. I loved it. It's the kind of thing that in books I could really hate. I'd be like, the plot made sense, we were progressing and then suddenly we just whoop, went over there. Um, and it can really throw you out the story, and I can totally see how this might have thrown some people out of Red Seas Under Red Skies. But for me, I loved the detour. I loved where we went. I think it was brilliant and it was fun. I love the um, 
character building, the character work that we get, particularly of Jean in this book, um, even more so than Locke in my opinion. And I really like the way that Scott Lynch does that. I am super, super excited to read The Republic of Thieves, book three, this month coming. I gave this five stars. I gave this five stars. I love the character work. I have a real soft spot for the found family trope, which we get a ton of here in the Gentleman Bastard series. And I really, really thought this was a great second book in the series. Um, I know this book has mixed opinions for many people who like the series. For me, I absolutely adored it. It was brilliant. It was everything I wanted from a book two in The Gentleman Bastards. Off we go then into the wonderful and wacky world of Stephen King. I read The Wastelands, that's book three in the Dark Tower series this month in June. And I've never read Stephen King before. This entry into the Dark Tower, this, you know, three books in I am now. This is the first Stephen King I've ever read. And the gunslinger gripped me with its style and its theming and its prose and its feel. I love the vibes we were getting from it. Um, the drawing of the three really felt like the beginning of the series. It very much more had the plot going. Here, this feels like, The Wastelands feels like the least enigmatic of the three. It feels like the most like a normal story, uh, the most like a normal fantasy, but it's still not normal. It is still super, super out there. Um, I love the way that Stephen King writes this. It very much feels like we are flying by the seat of our pants, like you have no idea where this could be going. It is just, it's just all over the place and things just happen. Um, and I love the way that things have just happened and I love the way that the characters are growing and engaging with each other. Again, this is masterful for me in terms of character work. I think that it is just so out there and it doesn't have the standard magic of an epic fantasy series. It feels very soft, very nebulous, very thematic magic. It doesn't have solid rules. I have no idea how it works. It's just, it just does. It's just out there super soft magic system um, and it definitely feels like things are just often happening to our characters um, but they don't feel like they lack agency and I really really like that. Um, I wasn't quite as gripped, I wasn't quite as pulled through the story as I was with the drawing of the three although the first part of the Wastelands almost feels like it's actually the end of the drawing of the three um, before we get on to the new book. So that was interesting and that did grip me. Um, I really love the use of riddles. I love the way that Stephen King um, uses wordplay and riddles in his story. Um, it's gonna start to get quite meta, I feel. I feel like The Dark Tower could be a very, very meta series. Um, it could start to even reference itself in a weird way. Um, I, I really like it. I like the way that the worlds interact and the way the worlds influence one another and I don't want to say more than that because I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but I really am enjoying this. I gave The Wastelands four and a half stars, um, which I believe is the lowest of the three I've read so far, but that's purely on the fact that it didn't quite grip me in the same way. It's still very good. It's still um, definitely super enjoyable. I am loving the characters we're getting. I am loving the story that's being told. Um, and I am, again, looking forward to continuing this series in July. Now, before we jump into the sci-fi, there is a reread I did this month as well, and this was of Ghost Story Book 13 in the Dresden Files. Again, it's a book 13. I'm not going to tell you much about it, except the fact that I really enjoy this one. I think this is underrated in the Dresden community. Um, it is not... It does not compare favourably to the book before. Changes is such an astounding, astounding piece of work. It is the magnum opus of Jim Butcher thus far, and it is just exquisite. Ghost Story is a much slower, smaller story. Um, it is definitely um, weakened by its comparison to changes. But for what it is doing, for what it is trying to achieve, I think it has done very well. I gave this four and a half stars, very, very enjoyable reread, and I am loving going through the Dresden Files again. I am highly excited to get back to these newer books and have a reread of book 16 and book 17 in particular as well. So enough of the fantasy, let's move on to the sci-fi. Now, I have read three sci-fi books this month, which is quite a lot for me. Now, all of these are quite short. They're 
sort of borderline novella novel length and all of them are by H.G. Wells. I have read nothing by H.G. Wells in my life at all um, but he is considered by many to be the, the father of science fiction, the, the father of modern science fiction and I think that what I've read so far from H.G. Wells, I am really loving. Now, in lots of ways, it's dated. In lots of ways, it is doing things before they became cliched. So you've got to give it a little bit of leeway for the fact that you can see where stuff is coming. You can see where it's going and how things are going to evolve because it is the thing that inspired so many of the things I have seen and read previously. So I'm trying to give it a little bit of leeway there. The three books I've read here by H.G. Wells were The War of the Worlds, The First Men in the Moon, and The Time Machine. Now, for me, the clear um, strongest work here was The War of the Worlds. Um, for those of you who don't know, The War of the Worlds is about a man who is on the ground when a Martian invasion starts. And the story starts with the Martians coming to Earth, looking for an inhabitable planet to come to and to rule. Um, and... I think the tone um, and the, the sense of dread and foreboding that we get in The War of the Worlds is a massive strength. I think the limited viewpoint we get from our singular character, but also enough of what's going on from him and from the story he recites from his brother um, and his brother's standpoint as well. I, I really like the way that H.G. Wells does that. It is very much atmospheric is very much um, a story about being helpless and struggling to survive, and I think that is done exceedingly, exceedingly well. For me, The First Men in the Moon, which was the second one I read, was definitely a little bit weaker. It was um, a little bit more... Um, less gripping, a little bit more passive. Um, I don't know what it was about it. Maybe it's the, the setting of the moon is less wondrous to me as a modern reader than it would have been at the time when H.G. Wells wrote this, but long before anyone had ever been to the moon. So maybe that has some impact on my um, slight ambivalence towards the first men in the moon. Um, I only gave that on three stars. I gave the World of Worlds four stars, and I think it was very, very good. And I can only imagine how um, differently I would have felt about this if I had read it at the time and I hadn't been... Um, engaging with so much science fiction that had evolved from Wells and his writing. Um, the last one I read was The Time Machine. Now, this was the shortest and actually a very, very strong entry. I really enjoyed The Time Machine. I think it was much more on a par with The War of the Worlds. Um, in all of these books that I've read, the theme is super strong. Wells clearly has political ideas that he wants to engage with. Um, he clearly has thoughts on humanity and where we are going as a people and as a culture and as a race and as a society. Um, and he clearly wants to explore that. He has big questions to ask about what makes us human and about our humanity, about our shared identity. And he, he does that really well. And that is clearly something that's running through all of these stories that I have read by Wells this month. Um, I gave The Time Machine four stars as well on a level with The War of the Worlds. Definitely enjoyed both of those. The First Man in the Moon, slightly less high on, but I can totally see why someone would love it and enjoy it. Um, it's really nice to read some historical early um, science fiction and to get a bit more of a, a grip and a taste for where this modern science fiction comes from, what it has been built upon. Um, and you're going to be seeing more of that coming in my TBR. On that note, let's move on to my TBR for July. Before I do that, do click the like button on this video if you are enjoying it so far and let me know what your favorite read was from June. Okay, what was your favorite book you read in June? Um, I would love to know what you've been reading. So in some ways, my to be read list for July is not going to be surprising if you have watched the previous part of this video, because in lots of ways I am reading continuations of the series I am currently in. So first up, I'm going to be doing my reread of Cold Days, book 14 in the Dresden Files. Not much more to say about the Dresden Files, you know I love it. As well as that, I'm going to be reading The Republic of Thieves. That's book three in the Gentleman Bastard series by Scott Lynch. And I am hoping that I love this as much as the first two books um, because I, I think it's probably more well-received widely than Red Seas Under Red Skies. So hopefully I will enjoy this as much, if not more. 
As well as that, I'm going to be reading Wizard and Glass by Stephen King. That is book four in the Dark Tower series. I don't know where the series is going. It's just absolutely nuts. And I can't even fathom where Stephen King is taking us on this journey. So I'm super excited to see what happens there. We definitely left with um, the plot um, chugging forward at the end of The Wastelands. So I'm excited to see how that goes. As well as that, I'm going to be continuing on with my reading of H.G. Wells. So I'll be reading The Invisible Man and I'm going to be reading The Island of Dr. Moreau. So The Invisible Man strikes me as one of those things that's probably very heavily influenced science fiction going forward. So I'm really excited to see and read that and see how it goes. Um, I've heard a few things about The Island of Dr. Moreau and it sounds to me like it hasn't had a particularly massive adaptation. It sounds like it really is talking about those themes of humanity and what makes someone human um, far more deeply than even Wells' other works. Um, I am actually really excited to get to the island of Dr. Moreau. I have very little clue what to expect, but I am expecting to enjoy it and expecting it to be good and thought-provoking. That is what I'm hoping, thought-provoking sci-fi in the island of Dr. Moreau, but we'll see how that goes. So there are the things you're probably expecting. Now, there's two more books I want to get to in July if I can and this is sort of on a side tangent from this exploring historical science fiction with the, the works of H.G. Wells um, and that's another subgenre of science fiction that I want to get back to the roots of. A couple of months ago you are probably aware that I read 36 Streets by T.R. Napper. This was a cyberpunk thriller and I absolutely adored this book. I thought it was incredible. It was the first cyberpunk I'd ever read and it just really, really did it for me. It was everything I wanted. It addressed themes um, and interesting thoughts. It was action packed. It was enjoyable. It was quirky. I loved the cyberpunk setting and it made me realize I have not read any other cyberpunk. So I am going to have to go back I'm going to have to go back and sort of rectify that. It's taken me a couple of months to get back to it, but I am super excited to rectify that. Now, the first thing that I am reading in this vein is Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. Now, you'll see here by my bookmark that I'm already about 60, 70 pages into Snow Crash, and I'm really enjoying it. It's a bit quirkier than 36 Streets. It feels less serious is a, not the right way to put it, but it feels more out there. It feels less like um, our current real world, like 36 Streets. 36 Streets feels like a progression from current Earth, whereas Snow Crash feels like a massive leap into the future. Um, it is written in an interesting way. I really engaged with the prose right from the start. The first two pages, just the prose really captured me with some crazy similes um, and just I really liked it I really felt interesting and different I don't often read books that have such startlingly bold prose now love it or hate it it is certainly a choice um, and that's something I'm really enjoying in that so far I would love to finish Snow Crash this month and get a feel for um, some of the older cyberpunk now that came out in 1992 but there is a predecessor to this, and the really credited as the first cyberpunk literature, and that came out in 1984, and that is Neuromancer by William Gibson. And you'll notice on Snow Crash here, on the, where is it? Yeah, the quote on the front is by William Gibson. The quote on the front of Snow Crash is by William Gibson. So clearly inspired massively by William Gibson and by Neuromancer. Um, so I really want to get to Neuromancer. I want to um, see where it all started. I've heard mixed opinions on Neuromancer. I've heard lots of people not really love it, um, which is interesting. But even if I don't love it, I think I'm going to enjoy seeing where Snow Crash came from and seeing the, you know, the, the DNA, the bones of the stock that it was 36 Streets, um, and I really do hope I enjoy that series and I will enjoy cyberpunk as a subgenre, because so far my one and a third books I've read of it, even less than that, I'm really enjoying it, and I really enjoy the subgenre so far. I love the questions it's asking, I'm loving the worlds that are being envisaged, um, and I hope that Neuromancer will be a hit for me as well. 
Do let me know down below what you are aiming to be reading in July. Um, there'll be another one of my videos over there somewhere. So if you want to go and check that out, do so. And hopefully I will be back on a slightly more regular schedule now. I'm hoping to be back at least once a week to let you know what's going on. Um, and keep an eye out for my mid-year freakout tag that will be coming soon. Love to see you guys. I'll speak to you soon.